Good Wednesday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to tonight's top stories, let's head outside and take a look outside our boy cloudy weather window on this Tuesday after, or I should say Wednesday afternoon. This is what it looked like this afternoon. We had some rain showers this morning and then more showers and even thunderstorms developed by mid and late afternoon around north central Washington today. Beautiful shot from our jump off ridge sky fi tower camera. And of course, that's looking down at the Wenatchee Valley. Looking ahead at our weather, things will get nicer. In fact, maybe an isolated shower for Thursday and a little bit warmer and then much warmer as we get into this weekend by Sunday 88 degrees and look at next week 92 on Monday and just downright hot by Tuesday with a high expected around 96 and we'll have your complete weather forecast coming up a little bit later on. And now a few of the stories we're following for you tonight. Two people were injured, one seriously, in a two-car accident yesterday afternoon on State Route 28, three miles west of Quincy. The Frenchman Cooley climbing area west of George was placed under level three evacuation orders last night because of a wildfire. Two brothers were arrested on felony warrants early Thursday morning in South Wenatchee by members of the East Cascade SWAT team. And Wenatchee police arrested a 26-year-old Wenatchee man after he allegedly stole a firearm from a trailer Monday night. But first, our top story tonight, a helicopter crashed this morning in an orchard south of Arondo, sparking a fire and leaving two people injured. The crash at about 9.20 a.m. occurred on agricultural land near Weaver Road and Longview Road. That's about five miles south of Arondo. The aircraft reportedly collided with power lines in the area. Douglas County Fire District 2 Public Information Officer Kay McKellar said two people suffered minor injuries in the crash, which sparked a fire and set up a, sent up a column of black smoke visible for miles. The Douglas County PUD said the damaged electrical line resulted in a power outage that affected 1,400 customers from Arondo to the Waterville Plateau. Their power was restored about an hour after that crash. Two people were injured, one seriously, in a two-car accident yesterday afternoon on State Route 28, three miles west of Quincy. The Washington State Patrol reports that at four yesterday afternoon, a semi-truck being driven by 52-year-old Ruben Lorena of Quincy was stopped in the westbound lane waiting for a vehicle to make a left turn off the highway when the semi was struck from behind by a 1988 Toyota Celica being driven by 54-year-old Victor Flores Meza of Quincy. A passenger in the Celica, 36-year-old Jolene K. Terry of Afreda, was airlifted to Sacred Heart Medical Center in Spokane with serious injuries. Meza, who was not wearing a seatbelt, was transported to Quincy Valley Medical Center in Quincy with unknown injuries. He faces charges of following too close. Lorena was not injured. Well, the Frenchman Cooley climbing area west of George was placed under level three evacuation orders last night because of a wildfire. The Grant County Sheriff's Office said the fire burned about two acres and the order was lifted after about two hours. The level three get out now notice about was uh, issued about 5.30 p.m. as firefighters responded to the fire reported in the Feathers climbing area. The Sheriff's Office said the Federal Bureau of Land Management patrolled the area overnight. The recreation area was not impacted and no residences were endangered. Well, two brothers were arrested on felony warrants early Thursday morning in South Wenatchee by members of the East Cascade SWAT team. Law enforcement authorities describe 24-year-old Jorge Velduza Mendoza and 28-year-old Osvaldo Verduzco Mendoza as two known gang members and the residence where they were arrested, rested in the 900 block of Methouse Street in Wenatchee is known as a gang hangout. The Columbia River Drug Task Force and the Department of Homeland Security say the home has been the target of investigations into narcotics firearms and gang activity in the past. A stolen firearm was among the items seized in the arrest. The Mendoza brothers are being held in the Chelan County Jail with more charges pending. 
In other news, Wenatchee police arrested a 26-year-old Wenatchee man after he allegedly stole a firearm from a trailer Monday night. Police say Victor Flores Beeson was arrested on foot in South Wenatchee on Tuesday after he was identified from surveillance footage of that theft. He reportedly had the AR-15 rifle in his possession when he was arrested. Flores Beeson was booked into the Chelan County Regional Justice Center on charges of unlawful possession of a firearm, theft of a firearm, second-degree vehicle prowling, and third-degree theft. Well, when we come back, a 44-year-old climbing coach from Vancouver is dead after falling from a sheer rock face in the Leavenworth area on the 4th of July. The state Supreme Court says the former chief prosecutor for Grant County pursued a racist line of questioning while selecting a juror in an assault case. And gas prices remain at historic highs, but it might bring some comfort to know they've been on a downward trend right here in north central Washington. I'm Grant Olson and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Get it. Tent camping can be a nightmare. You freeze all night and sweat all day. Well, now you can ditch the tent and camp in comfort during the Click It RV tent trade-in event. Bring us your old tent and get $1,000 towards your RV purchase during the month of July. As always, we've got the best price, selection, and service in the Northwest. Visit any one of our four locations in Spokane, Tri-Cities, Moses Lake, or Milton Freewater today. The tent trade-in event, going on now at Click It RV. Watch Vibrant Living, brought to you by the Wenatchee Valley Senior Activity Center. Find out about programs and activities for ages 50 and over, and meet amazing seniors who contribute to our community. New episodes Sundays at 1.30 p.m., replayed throughout the week on the NCW Life Channel. Get your body moving. Tune in for Vibrant Motion, featuring low-impact aerobics hosted by Connie Townsend. These workouts are great for all ages. Vibrant Motion, brought to you by the Wenatchee Valley Senior Activity Center. Weekdays on the NCW Life Channel. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. A 44-year-old climbing coach from Vancouver is dead after falling from a sheer rock face in the Leavenworth area on the 4th of July. The Chelan County Sheriff's Office says Brian C. Caldwell was climbing with a partner on Icicle Buttress, that's a rock feature south of town, when a storm front moved in and the two began their descent. His partner reached the ground shortly before 1 p.m., but then Caldwell's anchor apparently failed and he fell about 100 feet. His partner contacted a Forest Service ranger who called for aid. When rangers, uh, rescuers rather, arrived, Caldwell was dead. Chelan County Coroner Wayne Harris said the climber suffered blunt head trauma from that fall. Chelan County Fire District 3 and other rescuers recovered the climber's body. The state Supreme Court says the former chief prosecutor for Grant County pursue, pursued rather a racist line of questioning while selecting a juror in an assault case in which Moses Lake Police left the suspect unconscious after his arrest. Garth Dano, who stepped down last year as prosecutor, asked prospe prospective jurors their opinions on immigration, border security, and undocumented immigrants. The defendant in the case, Joseph Zamora, was a U.S. citizen. The jury convicted him of two counts of assault on a police officer, despite the fact the police punched him in the back of the head, tasered him, choked him, pepper sprayed him, and left him comatose during his 2017 arrest. The Supreme Court ruled Friday that Dano's questioning amounted to prosecutorial misconduct and threw out Zamora's convictions. Justice Charles Johnson wrote, quote, the state sanctioned invocation of racial or ethnic, ethnic bias in the justice system is unacceptable. 
Well, gas prices remain at historic highs, but it might bring some comfort to know they've been on a downward trend in north central Washington. AAA says the average cost of a gallon of regular unleaded gas is just under $5.30 in Chelan County. That's 11 cents a gallon cheaper than two weeks ago and 23 cents a gallon less than a month ago. On June 10th, Chelan County hit a record high of $5.53 a gallon on average. AAA currently lists Douglas County at 10 cents less than Chelan County at $5.20 a gallon. Gas Buddy, an online user-generated site, says the cheapest non-cash-only gas in the two counties is at Costco at $5.06 a gallon. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Please stay with us. Traditional values and innovation in honoring the life of each family we serve is part of the ministry of Heritage Memorial Chapel. Our staff is committed to walk with your family with compassion through this time of grief. We are here to help and here to serve the right kind of help when you need it most. Heritage Memorial Chapel. Introducing Alpine Air Man. Because every home needs a superhero to eliminate poor indoor air quality, send inefficient operating equipment packing, and cut high energy bills down to size. For heating or cooling and equipment replacement, turn to the experts and the superheroes at Carrier and Alpine Air. We offer the best deals on high efficiency Carrier products, along with friendly, knowledgeable service and incredible savings to fit your budget. For all the latest news in North Central Washington, go to ncwlife.com or find us on Facebook. Got a news tip? Email us at news at ncwlife.com or call 888-2020. The NCW Life Channel offers marketing packages that help you build your brand and sell your products and services. From traditional TV ads to targeted digital campaigns, let us help you build your customer base. Call NCW Life Channel today. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. On Friday, Mariah Thornock began her tenure as the newest director of the Wenatchee Valley Museum and Cultural Center. In tonight's feature story, NCW Life's Dan Koontz caught up with Thornock to talk about her new role. She's a longtime museum employee, now taking over from former director Kenny Sturgeon. When Kenny let the board know that she was leaving, the board decided to bring on a recruiting firm uh, to help them with the search. So this was a, a nationwide search that they undertook, but they really focused it in the Pacific Northwest, looking for somebody who had museum experience, nonprofit experience. And they spent some time deciding what they wanted the position to look like, if they wanted to make any changes from Kenny, particularly knowing that we wanted to you know, do big, great things in the future and find a, a person that would fit that. This spring, I decided that this was the, the right time for me um, to, to throw my, um, my hat in the ring, as you'd say. So I went through the same process that everybody else did. Definitely the, the, the end that I had is that I know the museum has a really solid vision for where it wants to go in the next five to 10 years. And so my, um, my job is to embrace that vision, which I already did. I think it's amazing. Um, but then talk about how I would be able to fulfill that vision, how I bought into it, um, how, I see, um, how I see that vision rolling out. And even after that's done, where, where are we going to go next? 10 years from now, where do I think that we could start to take the museum in a different direction or build it up further? So mine was that you've got an amazing vision. I'm bought in. I love it. Here's how we're going to make it happen. I know the challenges that um, that some of our staff is facing. I can help them in a in a in a higher capacity. Um, I also get to take time to dig in with all of the staff on things that they're working through and see if we can how we can support them better. Um, whereas I had my team before that I worked more closely with. So this is going to give me a chance to to work with the staff in a different way. Um, it's also going to give me an opportunity to go out to people that you knew me as director of operations. Now you get to know me as executive director, and hopefully those relationships will blossom as well.
Let's take a look now at your north central Washington weather forecast. Hope your Wednesday was a good one. Short week for many of us. So the weather, it's going to improve as we get towards the end of the week. Not so much today, though. We've seen a lot of clouds out there looking down at the Wenatchee Valley from this afternoon from our Wenatchee Heights Sky Fi Tower camera. And boy, our temperatures 12 degrees below where we should be for this time of year. 73 unofficially, 85 is our normal high temperature. 104, our record high, that was set back in 1968. We just didn't warm up all that much. We started off at 61 this morning. 60 now is our normal low temperature, our record low, 46, and that was set in 1971. I mentioned the shower activity this morning. That dropped about two one hundredths of an inch of moisture for us. More this afternoon and thunderstorm activity throughout our area. So I'll update this total of 5.73 tomorrow. But once again, that's well above where we should be for this time of year. Sunrise 512 this morning and the sun sets for us tonight at 859. Taking a look at your Thursday temperatures. Boy, we thought we'd get to at least 80 today. We're going to shoot for a little bit higher than that tomorrow. We hope we make it, but I think we will. We'll see some more sun. 84, Moses Lake, Afreda and Quincy. 83 in Wenatchee. 82 twos for Kashmir, Eniat, and Chelan, and around 81 for you folks down in the Ellensburg area. Taking a look at tonight, we expect showers to end. There have been showers early evening, and that will end uh, probably around 10 o'clock or so. Just some scattered activity around tonight. We're going to stay mild with lows tonight in the lower 60s. Getting you into Thursday, as we mentioned, a lot more sunshine tomorrow, and that should allow our temperatures at least to get into the low 80s as a ridge of high pressure pressure begins to scoot east and you can see the edge of it right here as we get into Friday mostly sunny and warmer for our Friday with high temperatures into the middle 80s boy all nice temperatures along the western states of the US mostly sunny on Saturday then as we kick off our next weekend going to call it seasonal highs with high temperatures again into the middle 80s very comfortable and that's all of north central and eastern Washington for Saturday Sunday this is where we we really begin to warm up our ridge of high pressure moving over Washington state and that will spread to the east as we get into Sunday high temperatures in the upper 80s by Monday lots of heat sunny and warmer we're going to see highs somewhere in the low 90s on our Monday to start our next work week off and by Tuesday I'll tell you what folks temperatures are going to be downright hot with high pressure continuing to intensify off the coast we're talking highs Tuesday into the middle 90s. How about 117 degrees down in Phoenix? Let's take a look now at your seven day forecast. 60 for our overnight low tonight. 83 with partly cloudy skies tomorrow, so not bad. As we get into our weekend then, things look very nice. Middle 80s on both Friday and Saturday. Mostly sunny skies. Sunny on Sunday and 88. And then, yeah, downright hot as we get into Monday and Tuesday. Sunshine both days. 92 Monday and 96, the high temperature on Tuesday. And that's a look at your local weather forecast. Coming up next, tonight's sports report with Dan Kuntz and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. Hello, my name is Brian Brett, the Fire Chief for Chelan County Fire District 1. And I just wanted to talk about how amazing our Rivercom team is. They are intentional, purposeful, and skillful in everything they do. And they are the best at what they do. How they prepare, how they handle the caller, how they coordinate the emergency services, and how they push themselves to be the best. This is the kind of spirit that our Rivercom telecommunicators have. Our community needs you. We need you. We admire you. You're our lifeline. Kim Schreier and Joe Biden's reckless spending worsened inflation, and liberals are defunding our police. I'm Reagan Dunn. As a federal prosecutor and on the county council, I've fought to keep us safe. I'm ready for the battle in Congress to fire Nancy Pelosi and stop Joe Biden's reckless spending. I'll fight to make our streets safe again and so you can afford to fill up your gas tank. I'm Reagan Dunn, and I approve this message because we need to defeat Kim Schreier to get America back on track. It has really um, been a great partnership between Succession and NCW Life. It's not always easy to sit in front of a, a camera or a, a microphone, but um, you guys have made it a really nice process. It's a little scary at first, right? You, you're just throwing money out there hoping it comes back. 
uh, and to see those results come back through and see people walk through the door and say, hey, saw your, uh, saw your TV advertisement. Um, those are the kinds of things that you see the return on. And when you look at the cost spent, uh, you know you're making a return on it. NCW Life really does a great job of exposing our brand and Succession Wines to North Central Washington. There's a huge market here and market potential that NCW Life is able to help us capture, uh, spread who we are and tell the world about what Succession does and, and they are a great avenue for that. And now it's a sports update on the NCW Life channel. Hello, sports fans. Good Wednesday to you. Logan Gilbert had a little bit of a struggle in the second inning, but he squeezed out of it. He got his 10th win of the season, and that ties the Major League record right now. Sam Haggerty had his first home run in a very long time. The Mariners look good, beating San Diego yesterday. The final was 6-2. to two. The Mariners have won 12 of their last 15. They sweep the two-game series. They've won five series in a row, and they're almost back to the 500 mark. Here are your highlights. Pitts swung on, one hopper to third, charging Suarez, he's got it. Steps into the throw, toss across in time to give Machado for the second out of the inning. Boyd batting 229, the Padres DH, 10 home runs, 35 runs batted in, former Yankee. Trying to keep the fastball away to Voigt. Line to left field, that's going to get in. Haggerty slides over to make the grab, he's going to hold Voigt to a single. Nicely done out there in left field for the Mariners left fielder. Here is Eric Hosmer. Grounder up the middle into center field, a base hit. Boyd will take second. Back-to-back -back base hit. Start this second inning for the Friars. Kind of jammed and flips it out to shallow right. Falling fast, and it's going to fall for a hit. It's going to load the bases. Three straight hits for the Padres. Open up the second inning. So a jam here for Logan Gilbert. His first start against San Diego. He's got Austin Nola. Put it in play. Gino's going to get the lead runner for out number one. Fly ball, Haggerty on the case. There's the throw, and boy, he got it in there. Nicely done. And the pitch from Gilbert popped it up. Julio, left center field. What a great escape, a terrific job by the Mariners and Logan Gilbert to get it. Down the line, stay fair. It did! Sam Haggerty with a home run, Mariners lead it one nothing. Sam getting a start today, a liner into the seats here in San Diego, and the Mariners after shutting out San Diego in that bases loaded situation, comes back with two outs and a home run, his first of the season. Levenger had been perfect, retired the first eight batters, EQC Tracer, that is right on the inside corner, exit velo of 109, a solid line drive, that leaves the ballpark. And just out of the reach of a diving Cronenworth as Toro will make his way to third. There you go. Hang with him. Nice job by Adam Frazier. Dylan Moore with a chance to give the Mariners the lead, get it back to him. Breaking ball, that's a fair ball, and the Mariners have a lead. Toro scores to make it 2-1. Frazier getting a wave on, he'll score easily. Demo will settle in with a two-run double, and the Mariners are back in front. It's 3-1 Seattle. Right in the middle of the plate. Uh, stayed right on it, able to keep it fair. Sam hits one hard, here comes Demo, getting a wave on. Here's the throw from Mazzara, it is offline. Another RBI for Sam Haggerty. And the Mariners lead goes to 4-1 to here in the fourth. That's a big time day. Your eight and nine hole hitters. Big cha-ching today in San Diego. Fly ball down the left field line. Has Haggerty over towards the stands. And he'll make the catch. Tagging is Mazzara. He will score up to second base. Also tagging is Grisham. Padres get their second run. It's a sack fly, and it's 4-2 to two now, Mariners. And the bunt bid, it's hard. Garcia has got it. His throw will get away. And heading for second base is Haggerty. The throw will be late. Nobody's covering third now. Manny is, and he is out. Wow. Whoa. All kinds of stuff going on on that play. Put up the big top. 
Wow. He looked up at second and nobody was actually covering third but Manny wasn't that far away as it turned out and Manny got over there and they throw him out. Yesterday is first day. After serving his suspension time. JP. Grisham. Not gonna get it. I told you everybody's gonna run. Haggerty scores. Julio scores to third, digging for three. He is in there with a two-run triple. J.P. Crawford. Grisham takes a lot of pride on being able to go back on five balls and liners. Not today. Six-two Mariners. Gilbert looked pretty good. He allowed just one earned run, gave up six hits in a little over five innings of work. His ERA is down to 2.61. We like that. Mariners are off today. Then they welcome the Blue Jays to T-Mobile Park for the first of four games tomorrow. Marco Gonzalez, the former Apple, former Apple Sox, will get the start tomorrow night against Toronto. Speaking of the Apple Sox, they came out victorious last night. Matt Halbach, Matt Halbach, he hit the go-ahead solo home run in the fifth inning, and that was the game changer. Evan Canfield tossing five shutout innings of relief, and the Apple Sox beat Kelowna last night at Elk Stadium. The final was 2-1. to one. Canfield punched out a season high 70 at five strikeouts in a row. At one point, he has the first save as of, the, of the summer. He now has a 1.25 ERA over 14 innings of work. He did get into some trouble, though. He allowed consecutive hits to open up the bottom of the fifth, uh, the bottom of the fifth in his first inning of relief. But then he struck out the side to get out of the threat in the ninth inning. He surrendered a leadoff walk and a sacrifice bump with then back-to-back pop-ups. End of the game, Riley Sinclair allowed just one run in four innings. He gets his first victory of the season. Michael Davini picked up a pair of hits, including an RBI base hit in the first inning. That put Wenatchee on the board in the first inning. The Falcons answered back in the first inning with a sacrifice fly. And then, of course, the game-winning home run by Halbach. And that was it. The Apple Sox can win their fourth series of their last five series if they can take the game tonight. 6:35, first pitch up in Canada. And those are just some of the games that people are playing on this Wednesday. Grant, back to you. Nice work, Dan. Thank you very much. And guess what? We're going to check right back in with Dan Koontz now for a look at what's coming up tomorrow morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Dan, back to you. Thanks, Grant. Join me for a Thursday edition of Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. As Grant has already mentioned, it looks like we're in for the nicest stretch of weather we've had, well, since spring or even before that. It's been a long time since so we had a long stretch of sunny, warm weather. We're heading into that. I'll give you your latest weather forecast. Not going to have any Mariner highlights uh, for Thursday. They don't play. Uh, on Wednesday, but they welcome the Toronto Blue Jays into town for a four-game series before the All-Star break comes your way. We'll have whatever sports we can cobble together and everything else we need to start your Thursday. We're live and we're local and we're darn proud of both. 7 a.m. tomorrow morning for Wake Up on H.E. Valley. Grant, back to you. Thank you very much, Dan. And that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for being with us and have a great night. Connect with us on Networked as we introduce you to the people and organizations who are leading innovation in the region. Get inspired, engaged, and networked right here on the NCW Life Channel. With TV advertising, what we want to do is more deeply connect with the community. People spot me in different parts around North Central, you know, Costco and Wenatchee say, hey, you're the pizza guy. And so they wouldn't know that if it weren't for the, for the TV commercials we've done. We've been here so long that people already know who we are and what we do, but to have that image flash on their television screen as opposed to just hearing in the radio or seeing in the newspaper. I just love the fact that we can actually put our finger on when a customer comes in and says, I saw your ad. It's becoming increasingly difficult in this digital age to know where are your customers listening or watching, because I watch all the different channels that they watch too, like Cooking Channel, History Channel, and so it was wonderful to be able to be on there. I would say that uh, if you wanna do business in Wenatchee, then you should connect with the people of Wenatchee, and there's no better way to do that than with NCW Life.